welcome to Jamie TV. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for joining me. Welcome, people of the universe. Anyone who's watching from the future, thank you very much for watching. Now, um, today, um, what I wanted to do was to create a track with Cubasis 3 with the new updates because... Oh, hey, Stephen. Thanks for joining. And hi, Joe and Sam and Gerald. Um, welcome. Now, uh, yes, because, okay, so, um, abbreviated version, Cubasis 3 came out, and it was terrible, and then it had a couple of updates, and it was better, it actually was slightly better than Cubasis 2, and then, more recent updates, it actually got quite awesome. Now, 3.4 update, it really got very, very good. Um, but it did come with a couple of little bugs with those updates. And, um, and now we've had the 3.4.1 update, which fixes pretty much all of the bugs. I've not encountered any serious problems at all. Um, in fact, I don't think I've, I've encountered any problems. So what I wanted to do was to make a track... Um, and sort of like really kind of put it to the test. So let's just go through a few little things. Oh, hey, Josh, thanks for being here. Um, yes, what was that? What was I saying? Uh, I'm so very, very easily distracted. Um, yeah, so um, you may have wondered, if you recall, I started a previous stream with this track because I had just got... The iPad Pro uh, 2021 11 one terabyte, and um, and I was making this track to kind of put it through its paces, and I wasn't overly impressed with Cuba with it in in Cubasis three the way it was performing. But then the 3.4 update came out, and we got the um, we got oh let me press this button, we got the. Uh, multi-core processing which as you will see i have set to default which seems to work best for me uh, and then it was a whole different ball game it was amazing i couldn't believe what i could do so um when i was thinking about making a track today i thought well i've already got that track that i kind of you know i liked the beginnings of that so let's kind of get stuck into that track and see what i can do with it so i'm going to show you what i've got in this project what i've already got set up and exactly what's happening here so you can see exactly how this ipad is performing with cubasis 3 with the new updates um somebody else just appeared in the chat hi ed dude thank you for being here right so um, what have I got? I made a list, actually, rather than going through all of the tracks and picking it apart and telling you what I've got. I got this book for my birthday. It's a notebook. It's got Darth Vader on it. It's awesome. Right, okay, now, so in this project, I am already using uh, Model D, K7D, uh, FAC Alteza, Waverly Excel, Perforator, um, frames by Imaginando, which is awesome. Um, two instances of DRC, FAC Drum Kit, Pro Q3, Spark Verb, Agonizer, three instances of Tonestack Pro, uh, Black Ice, the bass amp, one of only about three available for iOS, which is very sad. I've got two instances of the new Nambrini guitar amp, the um, High Vault, which is just great. Um, and Eventide Spring and uh, Nambrini's NA808 overdrive pedal. So that's quite a lot of AV3s. Now, I don't know if you saw what the DSP was doing there whilst um, I was just playing the opening track. Let me just... Throw it in here so that you can see. We'll go to this screen here so you can have a closer look. Um, and here we go. Right, so you will see that 
for the amount of EV3s I have in this project, um, the DSP is not getting particularly overexcited, right? Which is, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed. But let's just do some more recording and let's just really put it through its paces. Um, I'm going to continue with the recording on this track and I'm probably I'm not going to finish the track. But um, but while I work, you'll be able to see how Cubasis 3 performs. Now, Gerald, to answer your question regarding track counts, the way that it works in Cubasis 3, I'm going to put my new book down. I just want to show it off again. A little present there. Um, so... Uh, yes, Cubasis 3, track count. There's actually no limit, as far as I'm aware, to the number of tracks you can actually have. And if all of those tracks just had real audio on them, you could have an incredible, more than you would ever need. It is, of course, the AV3s and Interop Audio that, um, that use up the DSP. Um... And so you are limited by the amount of of these plugins that you use. And this is why I'm always saying to people, you know, you have to at some point when you're running low on resources, you have to commit to real audio. And to be absolutely honest, before you do a final mix down, you should be committing everything to real audio because you cannot trust uh, an AV3 or a plug-in on your desktop, it, should, it works the same on desktop, to to mix down perfectly if you don't commit it to real audio first. Once you've committed it to real audio, you know exactly what it is going to sound like in your mix, and that is how you should be working. So, that... I believe answers your question, Gerald. If I've not covered everything, if you have a further question, by all means, throw it in the chat. And um, and if I miss it, someone else here will, will definitely help you. Um, I'm sure Samuel's, Samuel's around. And Samuel knows everything. Right, so uh, what am I going to do first? Right, so I have got... I need to go to this view. I've been really looking forward to this all day. Um, right, so, um, what I did, whilst I was kind of waiting for the stream to start, I started having a look at a few ideas of what I could do with this track. So, my idea is, up to this point, it's kind of, it's an electronic track. It's sort of a, maybe a bit of a synth wavy kind of a sound, somewhere in that kind of ballpark. And, um, and then, after this point here where i've got this build up and a bit of a crazy combination of chords actually it builds up and i'm thinking that from there i'm going to have a very distinct change to what's going on um i think we're going to go with some real instruments from there integrated with the electronic stuff so um i put a little drum pattern in here so I'll unmute this now, and you'll see I've already got a, a loop set up around here. Right, so um, th I, I was just kind of putting notes in to the drum pattern, just kind of looking for a feel. Um, and I was messing around on my bass, and I've kind of I've got a bit of a riff. So um, let's get the bass. And now, which side of my interface is this lead plugged into? Oh, the correct one. There we are. That's a, that's a shock. Um, BX3. I'm going to come to quite soon. I'm quite excited about this. Let's. Um, no, we'll not arm that track. We need to put the lead in the bass first. Stupid hippie. Okay, uh, I've got that one. Okay, thanks, Gerald. Commit the track to audio. They do a mix down that makes more sense than going straight from MIDI. He does. He does. That is um, what does Mandalorian say? This is the way. Right. 
Um, I need to press this. That might be a bit loud. I think that's distorting the stream a little. Uh, Um, I'm going to switch my headphones because the headphones coming from the computer give me a little latency. Of course. Of course, it would be tangled, wouldn't it? Okay, so now that I'm over here on the... Um, on the cheap, crappy old headphones, um, you'll have to tell me if I'm distorting the stream at all, if anything's wrong with the sound, okay? I am relying on you to do this for me. Something like that, right? So let's have a little play. Right, something like that. Um, so I guess what I'm going to need is I'm going to need some more bars of this. So if I go there, and I don't know if you know this, right, we can... You are amazing. I've got a bit longer hair to buy. I have to keep my ears clear when wearing headphones. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, just, it don't bother me anymore, so I'm just used to it, right? I'm going to um, make sure I'm selected on this track and press paste. I don't even know, know that you can, I've forgotten how to talk, that you can do this, but instead of moving my um, transport bar over to here, I can, if I press paste again, it will just put it after the last one I pasted. Not everybody knows it. Right, okay, so mm, I don't know how long I want this to go for, so let's just see what it's like at that. Um, actually, I don't want to loop because I want to check the length. Where, well, madam? Right, okay, I'm thinking maybe I will do it once with bass, then maybe bring the guitar in for the second time around, so maybe that's about the right kind of length. Um, I'm, I'm missing something, I'm missing a count. So, uh, Josh says, the only real problem I've come across is if you, mu if you m mute an in app audio and unmute it, it doesn't work, it loses the link. Also, when you freeze something, it will lose the link. Yeah, I think we were talking about this before, Josh. Um, I don't know 100%, so right, I can't swear to it, but I think that that is more to do with the fact that interrap audio is becoming a thing of the past. It is gradually fading away. Um, and, you know, it, it is going to become more and more problematic um which is why i'm very very reluctant to buy anything that is in trap audio only um and it concerns me about certain things like like the way that we can record aum into cubasis 3 um is becoming more and more delicate so yeah you used to have the same problem with Cubasis too. Yeah, I mean, it's always been a problem. Interrupt Audio has never been rock solid. Right. So, so what, I guess what I'm saying is I don't, I don't think it's a Cubasis 3 problem because it's not like Interrupt Audio is only a problem with Cubasis 3. It's um, kind of all round a bit dodge. Right, I want a hi-hat to give me a count. I'm going to put a hi-hat... 
Uh, if I just do this, it'll make it a bit easier for me. I can just go. There we go. Right. Okay, that's going to give me a count. Now, maybe I should decide what I'm going to play. I like that one. Okay. Kind of like that one as well. I'm going to play this over a seven, so that gives me a mixed Lydian kind of a sound. That gives me the blue note. And that gives me the minor to major third. So. It is. It's brilliant, isn't it, dude? Right. I think I've got it. I don't know if I can play it, but I think I've got what I want to play. So... If I go from there. <laughs> that wasn't what I wanted to play, what I wanted to play at all. <laughs> Hang on, let's see. Okay, and then am I going to play that? Uh, again, but with a stop on the end, I think. Let's see if I can put that down. I'm not even check my tuning, but... But it's good. Okay, so where's my bass that I set up? There. Okay, that's ready to record. It's so funny that Cubasis can layer multiple MIDI clips but you can't create a new empty clip on top of an existing one and no easy way to switch between layers when editing absolutely yes that's something that needs to come in Sam definitely and it has been mentioned <laughs> I think that was what I want. Right? So, just make sure it sounds okay. All right. Okay. It isn't perfect, but um, we're throwing down a track quickly. I'm not going to try and get something absolutely bob on perfect. I can always edit or re-record slightly later if I think that this project is definitely going somewhere. So uh, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to tidy up the front end of the audio here by just dragging in this little bit here, just in case there's been noise on the beginning. Um, and I'll just put a little micro fade in there. And I think we're good to move on from there. Right, now, before I continue with the bass, I think I want to put a bit of organ on. Um, shall I do that? The BX3. Uh, yeah, because I want to show you this thing. I want to show you this thing. Oh, my, my hair's caught in my, my strap button. Oh, no. I really must replace that strap button does it all the time it yanks out great chunks of my hair look I'm hardly got in the left okay right so um when it comes to interrupt audio i do wish korg would update their sense to av3 yes me too um it's uh Right, this is something that I have actually spoken to a few developers about. Now, I don't, I don't want to talk out of school. I don't want to talk about which developers um, because it probably isn't the right thing to do. It probably isn't fair. But some developers have said to me that uh, when they've got uh, interrupt audio apps out there, 
that need changing to AV3, or ideally would be updated to AV3. Um, it's not just as simple as that. Um, in all cases, in some cases it is. In some cases it can be done, but it, it depends on, it's something to do with code, with old code. Um, with some of the apps, it would be a massive, massive job. Some have actually even told me that it's not possible. And I don't know whether that, that's actually true. But um, the point is, if it's a massive job and it's an app that's been out for a long time, then updating it to AV3 probably isn't going to generate that many more sales. Um, you know, I mean, if it's been on sale for a long time, how many more sales is it going to get? So do you as a developer um, invest a massive amount of time into something to generate just a few more sales? You know, because it's, you know, obviously income, money, you know, it's a reality. So I didn't express that very well, but I think you know what I mean. Right. So, okay. Um, the organ, the BX3 is absolutely magnificent. It's an incredible sounding thing. It looks wonderful. It's massively fully featured. I mean, that's, I've, I've kind of hardly scratched the surface of what it can do. And I'm not going to be doing that today because we're recording a track. But I just want to say that if you're really serious about organ, then buy this because it's magic. I know it's not cheap, but you know, it really is good. It's, it's marvellous. So, um, now there was something. Oh, yes, right. Okay, so one of the things that needed fixing was... If you go to your, let me just arm this track, right? If I just, right, okay. Um, if you go to your on-screen keyboard and then you switch this slider over here to pads and then you can play whatever instrument you've armed with chord pads. Now, um, I wanted some time ago to play the chord pads with my controller, right? With my LPD-8. And when I mapped it with the MIDI mapping in here, with this MIDI learn, right? When I mapped it to the chord pads, as you'll see, I've mapped these eight already here. Um, when I mapped it, when I used the controller, I wasn't getting a chord. I was just getting the root note. Um, that's been fixed, right? So now I can exit MIDI learn, right? Okay, so now I can play some chords with this. Or apparently, maybe I can't. <laughs> Don't you just love live streams? Uh, okay. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I reset my controller so it's on the wrong... There we are. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I had to reset my controller. And so when it resets, um, it comes on to... It, it was on a different preset. I don't need to explain that. Right. So um, so I've mapped these eight chords at this end here to these eight buttons on my LPD-8. And I've, I've, um, I've altered the chords. You can go into edit here. And you can alter the chords to different intervals and different kinds of chords um so i've set up the chords for the key that i want this next bit to be in so um i've got an um a seven here an e7 right now the nice thing about this is if you are really pants at playing keyboards like me now i play keyboards and i, and I do make myself learn new chords and and try and get better at chords and and, and i kind of like to spend some time and make myself be able to play something and then record it um you know i just i just like to to progress as a player on whatever instrument but i'll probably you know i'm never going to be doug woods um and so um being able to play chords like this actually enables me to be able to play something in 
that I would not be able to play it on the keyboard. So, um, so that's a good thing, right? Uh, so if I go now, just go back to that four there. Yeah, before the four would be good. I think that bass is a bit loud. Let's just bring that down a little bit. And then try that again. Ah. Okay, so we have a hanging note on BX3. I wonder. We just turned down the iPad. Okay. And that'll stop in a moment. Oh, there we are. It stopped. Okay. We'll restart Cubasis 3. Now, I don't know why it does that. It actually did do that to me earlier. And um, I've not had any hanging notes in this project whatsoever until I added BX3. It's not taxing the DSP. Um, I don't know whether it's a BX3 problem or a um, controller problem or a Cubasis 3 problem. But um, it has not... It's not the first time it's happened, let's be honest. Right, so, where was I? Um, maybe, I'll tell you what I'll do. Instead of using the controller, what I'll do is I'll try, I'll just play it on the, on the screen, and, and if it doesn't happen again, then maybe it's a controller problem. I don't know. Maybe someone in the chat knows more about this than, than I do, and if so, please do impress us with your knowledge. Hi Burns, thanks for joining us, man. Right, so I'm going to use this on the screen, and we're going. Is that still armed? It is. Okay, let's give that another try then. Where's my bass there? There we are. Okay. Right, I think after this section, I'm going to do more with the organ, but for this, I'm just going to accent those E's. I just noticed something. They're not the right chords. Because I'm not I'm not on the right track. Oh, right, okay. I, do you know what? I never noticed, but what you can do is you can set the chords up for the track that is highlighted. If you move on to another track, they change back to default. So you could actually set them up differently for different instruments. I did not know you could do that. Oh, I just not noticed it anyway. Okay, let's take let's have a go at this take again. Alright, I think they all sounded quite good apart from the last one. So let's just uh, redo that last one. I'm just gonna um just going to that's in my way there we are. Right. Oh no, don't do that. Undo that. Okay. And there we go. Let's just redo that last one. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't even do one in time. Right, now don't act like you're not impressed with my on-screen keyboard playing. I'm not having it. Okay, and now if I select both of those and press blue, now they are joined together in perfect-ish harmony type thing. All right, now. Uh, Joe, you mentioned earlier that the stream was freezing for you. Is it freezing for anyone else? And is it okay for you now, Joe? Just uh, let me know. Let me know. It, I mean, it should be good. It's it, Everything looks good here. Um, right. So now I have some... Do I do the guitar next or do I work at the next... Yeah, I want to do the next section of um, of organy thing. So I wonder, if, shall I keep the same drum pattern? I, th I think I will. I think I'll keep the same drum pattern. Um, let's make that snap to bar. Do this. Select all this. And copy this across. Now I was tinkering about with the pads earlier, which I was quite enjoying doing on my controller until it um, 
did the horrible hanging note freeze thing. So, uh, not freezing for you. Okay, that's all oh, great. Oh, that's good to hear. Right, thanks for letting me know. All right, so, um, so am I going to keep these drums? Let's so, see if I can remember what I was playing earlier with the uh, with the pads. Um, so that's going to come in just. I'm give myself a couple of bars. Run up. Right, okay, I want this night like right nice cheesy ending thing. Um and it's gonna it's gonna sound silly, but I kinda I've got this idea. Bear with me. <laughs> was kind of what I wanted, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, good to hear. Thank you, Gerald. Um, now, glue that on there, I think. <laughs> Um, I've got this idea, and what's uh, I'm not going to explain it, uh, bore you with it right now. But um, what I want to do is this major chord, this E major chord on the end of this section here. I want it to change to a minor chord um, about about here, I think, and that's how I'm going to get into a reprise of the beginning of the tune. So that's, let's see now, where's my third? Well, that's my E, so, so that must be my third then. Yeah, that's my third there. So I'm gonna, um, here, chop that note, this one, and then grab all these three, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, grab all them and drag them to the end of the bar. Okay, let's just hear that change to a minor. Yeah, okay, that will work. Trust me, trust me, that will work. Um, yep, I think it's, uh, Oh, you're not talking about that. Okay. Um, your iPad was having a moment. So, oh, I see. So it was your iPad that was having a moment, and that's why the stream was going. Okay, right. Ignore me. Um, right, now, um, I should do the bass for that bit, and then maybe we'll look at some guitar there. Okay. Um Right. It seems that maybe it was a controller problem because um, it didn't screw up whilst I was whilst I, I was uh, using the on-screen chord pads. So. <laughs> right. So what will that be then? That's a. I think that's right. Okay, let's just see if I know what I'm doing. Right, that organ's a bit loud on playback. Let's just... Ah. Another go. Right, 
okay I wonder if I can get a bit more a bit more fingery I wonder madam <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got my finger. I played wrong notes, but I got the feel I wanted. Okay, again, not perfect playing. None of it is, but we you know we're throwing a track together real fast, and I can always um, have a pissy pants around with it in my own time and not bore you by um, aiming for perfection. And sometimes, you know what? Music sounds better when it's not perfect anyway. Um, well, at least that's my excuse. Right, I think we should do some guitar. So um, I'm going to un thingy this and I can take my lead out that needs to go in the other side of the interface there we go yes I could do with a beautiful assistant for the for these things and a beautiful assistant to pass me a guitar what guitar shall I use oh, this one's nearest we'll use this plus it's a very beautiful gold right now you never been a fan of the sound of organs? Oh, oh, really, Gerald? I say I'm a massive Deep Purple fan, right? Just massive Deep Purple fan. And, uh, and you know, so for me, you know, I, I just like to put on a great organ sound and plug in my controller and pretend to be John Lord for five minutes, you know, and then I, and then I just, you know, realize I'm just embarrassing myself. What am I using for the bass? Um, I'm using my Fret King Ventura, my very favorite bass for recording. Um, and I am using Nimbrini's Black Ice Beta Gamma. Um, and I am, and I've got Tone Stack Pro uh, before it, although it's, there's no, I'm not using any sounds out of it. All I'm doing is I'm using just the tuner because um, because Cubasis 3, despite my, you know, constant um, pestering about it, doesn't yet have an onboard tuner, which is ridiculous. Um, but then none of the doors do. Um, and because I like the Numbrini apps, uh, they don't have tuners in them because they're like standalone apps. So I have to open Tonestack Pro just to have a tuner. And I use Tonestack Pro a lot for effects in front of the amp as well. Right, so I'm going to need to... Ooh. That might be a bit lightning. It might be a bit too uh, springy as well. We're going to... Uh, spring reverb here. In fact, let me just switch it off. I'm going to show you very, very quickly. I don't want to get lost in this, but... Um, again, on this track, I'm using Tone Stack Pro for a tuner for the guitar. And... Um, Numbrini's High Volt... 103 which is of course an emulation of the um of the old high watt amps and um and i love those amps i've never had one but they're great for that kind of like transparent but raw biting kind of just great great rock tone if you want something that kind of can be really sort of in your face without necessarily being too metal. Um, they're a great, great amp. And I'm really enjoying this. So I just got it today and, I, and I'm, I'm thrilled with it. I'm going to stick with the sound as it is for now and I'll, I can refine that later. And I'm thinking I'm going to do, for the first pass, I'm going to do what I did with the um, uh, thing. You know, the thing. With the organ, with the uh, E7 chord. There's still too much spring, but even tied spring just sounds so good. Right, that's probably a bit better. Um, and I don't think I need to do a test run on this. Oh, I 
I'm on the wrong bit. Uh, here we go. Oh, where's my count gone? Oh, I chopped it off, didn't I? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave that with just organ and bass, uh, and I'm gonna do it here. That's what I'm gonna do. Right. Okay. I kind of like that. That's. Right, okay, now then what we're going to do here is we're going to go... Oh. Mm, I wonder, I wonder if we should go with a, a bit of a lead over that organy thing there. Should we have some rhythm as well, maybe? Maybe we should have some rhythm as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's that chord then? Uh, and then what did I play then? Oh dear, diminished chord. Um, I might just go with the power chord for that. Right. Let's see. No, I don't like it. Simple. I'm going to leave that for now. I'm not I'm not entirely thrilled with it. Um, I'll have another go at that later on, I think. So let's have a look at maybe, maybe we'll stick a, what time is it? Right. So maybe we'll stick a lead on there. Um, what's my other guitar sound down here like? That one's more of a Les Paul. Neck pickup, I think. You have all but one of the Nimbrini amps. Which one do you not have, sir? Hey, not is here. Naughty dude. Thanks for near, man. See what this is like.
<laughs> yes, Gerald. It's getting a little bit um, uh, progorama, I think. Uh, now I'm thinking. I'm just going to have a go. <laughs> Mess, a complete mess. I like that lick, but apart from apart from the chucking the bad note. Ah, okay. All right, okay, now that's not played perfectly, and I will redo that later, but that's a nice sort of guide to the kind of lead I want there. Um, it does want some more weight behind it. Wants, um, it definitely wants a rhythm guitar there, but I don't know exactly what to play there, so I'm going to leave it for now, and I'm going to show you what my mad idea is for the end of this track. Um, okay, so, I mean, you know, I'm going to be leaving this with a lot of work left to be done on it, but... I'll show you my idea. So, um, yeah, unarm the guitar. I did right. I can unplug. Right. I just saw a notification on the old iPad over here, which is out of shot, which is an old iPad Air that I use as a stream deck. Um, that uh, Doug is streaming this evening at eight o'clock as usual. So. Um, when I finish the stream, as usual, I'll go for a quick fag, grab, grab a coffee, and uh, I'll join you all in Duck Stream. So, let's see what I can get done in the last 10 minutes. I'm going to switch my headphones back, because these sound like shite. Ancient Altai headphones. Terrible. Get them out of the way. And we're back. Okay, right. Now, um, what was my idea? Okay, this was my idea. Um, I want, after this kind of mad middle bit, which kind of goes completely just in a different direction to the rest of the track, I want it to drop back in to what was happening before this section. I want it to drop back into that, but... This time around, it's going to have the addition of real instruments as well as the electronic stuff. So, first thing I need to do is to see which which chunk of, of MIDI is that going to be. I think it's going to be um, from where the drums kick in. So, yes. So, from here. And I've not got everything I want there. Let's try that again. Copy that. Now this, of course, is going to be in the wrong key when it comes back in. And I, if if my brain's working correctly, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drop it a semitone from the beginning of the track. So we're actually going to key change down. Um, and this isn't in the same key as the section I've just played, but this chord will sound good after that section. The first chord will sound good after that section, and that's all that matters. I think. In my head, it sounds great. So where's it going to come in? We've got this. Right, after that minor chord there, snap to bar. Put that there. And then paste. Be brave. I think that's right. 
Um, now, before I change the key of this, I want, I don't want that to play that melody there. I want to, oh, don't do that. Right, we'll get rid of that bit. And we're going to get rid of these bits. Um, and I want the Model D melody bit there. Right, want that on this section here. Paste that in. Okay. Um, right, now, now I can select all of it and drop the key. I'm, I think this is right. It's, um, drop it a semitone. Um, yeah, I'm beginning to doubt myself now. Okay, so I'm wondering if that should come in a bar earlier, actually. In fact, you know what, I just remembered what it is that we're actually here to talk about, and um, and that is how well Cubasis 3 is performing. So, I'm going to System Info so you can see the DSP while this is playing, and while I just have a think about this bit. <laughs> Yeah, that works. But you know what? I think I do want that to come in a bar earlier. Um, I've got some more ideas for this track, actually. What I'm thinking about at the end of this track is... I don't know if you saw the stream I did a couple of weeks ago where I demonstrated how you can use the new um, MIDI time stretch to slow something down. I think I want this one to kind of slow down at the end of the track to a kind of a, you know to a kind of a almost so slow it falls apart kind of thing. It's an idea. Maybe I'll do it in another stream. I mean, tell me in the chat, what do you think? Would you like another stream where I work further on this track? Would that be cool? Or is it about time I stopped wobbling on about Cubasis 3 and do some streams about some other stuff? Tell me honestly what you think. I have very broad shoulders. See, I don't care. You'll not upset me. Um, right, so uh, with all of the, you know, imperfect planes, some of which I will we'll redo um, and stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this track in a moment and just play out with it because it's almost time for Doug's stream and I don't want to overlap, I want to watch it. So, um, thank you ever so much for being here, thank you for joining me. Um, it's always a pleasure. In fact, I'm going to start this playing while I'm talking like some kind of a professional with some idea what he's up to. And I'll turn the volume down over here and it'll be in the background and that'll be very clever and awesome. Right, okay. So, yes. Thanks ever so much. Do something else. <laughs> okay, Ed. All right. Um, thanks for being here. Um, if you do have any questions about Cubasis 3, anything about iOS music or anything music related at all whatsoever all the information about how to contact me is down below this video and you are very very welcome to do so and if you would like to support me in any way um, because revenue from ads on YouTube comes to about 20 pounds a month uh, so <laughs> it's not an awful lot on my Patreon, we're doing a lot of stuff, um, there's collaborations, and I am making uh, loops and samples and stuff to give away to patrons, to patrons for nothing. Um, you can join it for as little as uh, a quid, a dollar, a shitter, or whatever you want to pay per month. Or if you would like a Don't Pissy Pants About t-shirt, then check out the link that Joe put, uh, put in the chat. Uh, for my merch on Bandcamp. Alright, so 
Uh, oh, and yeah, of course, there's also my very out of date website, which is getting revamped soon. There's a link for that too. And my direct email address. If you want to stop me on social media or email me direct, I'll answer any of your questions. All right. So all of you take great care of yourselves. Be good. Enjoy making lots and lots of music. And do not piss your pants about. And hi, Russ. Thanks for joining. Just before I say goodbye, see you later. Bye now. <laughs>